Well, here we are in sunny Denmark, right on the banks of the River Gudden. It's very similar to a lot of waters back home. They tell me this fishing's a lot, lot better. The swimming by here looks very inviting. Nice back eddy there, fast. Super. There's one over there, mine. That looks just as good. Let's have a go by here. Come on. Now we looked at the swim, I'd like to show you how I think I'll tackle it to begin with. I'm going to use the feeder. Now the type of feeder I'm going to use is the old mouth story type. You've got the block end so they don't slide up the line and they're attached to the lead. Quite good. Because of the nature of the, of the swim and the fast flow on the far side, I've added a bit of extra lead. Actually, it's uh, not lead, it's the new alloy substance. Put a couple of them in anyway to help to weigh it down. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to use a link ledger here. And what I've done here, I made a loop on the line, tied a piece of line about two and a half foot, 2.6 line, direct to a four pound line. And then I'm going to use a size 14 hook. Uh, one of the Komatsu carbon type, they're quite strong. Now, <clears throat> one of my uh, favourite ways of hooking the bait is threading one up through the shank, which I'll do now, from the crown up through, like so, you see? Okay, the ground bait I mixed up is a fine white brown, brown and white mix. And I've added, added some red maggots, white maggots, casters, and some chopped worms. Now I've made it so it's sloppy, plenty of water. So uh, by putting in the feeder, it contains it. And it means that it'll come out of the feeder quite easy. There you are. So I'll put some in now. Stuff it in, use your finger. There you go. Now I'll try and pluck it into the old, uh, the hole on the far side. So let's see if we can attempt to do that with our first cast. There you go. Over. I'm going to aim for that tree opposite right on the current, just inside that bit of slack. Now this river reminds me very much of the River Wye back home. Now this method I'm going to use is a bow in the line method and I'm going to look for a drop back bite. Now these bites are quite dramatic sometimes because you get a big bump and then it'll all go slack. You've got to quickly retrieve all the slack line. So now, I think I'll add a bit more ground bait over there because as I'm just starting this swim, I need to build up uh, the fish to feed. And I know that this is a good area and I know that there are good bream here. So let's have a go. I'm going to use a cannibal because it's a little bit too far to throw by hand. So I'll, I'll use a catapult. I should be able to get right over in the same spot every time. And keep an eye on the tip, of course, because I might get a bite. You, you never know when to expect a bite. Here we go. Right into the stack water. I think I'll put about half a dozen balls to begin with. That's one. Two. I was a bit short, that one. I was a bit short, too. And get it over a bit further next time. Mind you, it's very windy today, so when I when I look for those bites on the tip, I'll have to distinguish between the wind knocking it and a proper bite. Yeah. Now to fit the pouch, I've got to make the ground bait like so. It's no good making it round because you'll find that 
it'll you, you won't get the same accuracy. Because what I'm doing, actually, I've got a bite. Yeah, I'm in. Oh, look at that rod go. Beautiful. Oh, this is brilliant. I wish, I wish we could have fishing like this back home. Oh, look at that. Oh, blimey. I want to take it easy. I don't want to lose my first fish. Come on. Come on, lovely girl. <coughs> I don't like calling her a girl. <laughs> Could be a boy's as I know. Come on. God, this wind's catching the line a bit, though, so it's putting that extra bit of pressure on the hook, which I don't really want. Never mind. Come on. Ooh. Oh, he's stuck, is he? Oh, hang on. I have to go. He's stuck on a weed bed. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, blimey. Blimey, Charlie. God, this is how I'm making. Not used to this type of fishing. <laughs> That's it. Well, if I bring his head to the surface now, he should, he should net it easier. Yep. <laughs> Look at that! Oh, brilliant! God, blimey! God, Look at that! <laughs> Look at that double maggot! Look, right in the mouth there. The way I set up the shank. <laughs> I, I fox you. Look at that though, beautiful. Yes, I was right, it is a female. You can tell by the thick fins on the, underneath. Ah, very good. <laughs> well, I hope there's more of them to come yet. Well, that was fabulous. Just wiping the slime off the old hands. Full of slime, these bream. Just because they're cleaning themselves off from spawning, I think. Right. Well, first thing, I better not put any more ground in because if I do, <laughs> I'm liable to scare them off if they're if there's more than one, just one there. Right, now before I caught that bream, I did mention about the bowline method, so let me explain that a bit more now. Let me just bait up and I'll explain that method. Here we go. Now this is another method, incidentally, for <coughs> hooking maggots. Uh, top and tail, through the crown, like so, and then one through the, the mouth, so to speak. There we are. Okay, the reason we do that is that you eliminate some of the spin on the line. Especially when you retrieve or when it's uh, in flowing water. Oh, some more ground bait, let's put some more of the ground bait in. What I like about swim feeder fishing, it dictates how much feed you put to the fish. Because if the fish are biting regular, then it means that there's more feed going in. If they're not biting so regular, then you, you only put the amount of food in that the fish will accept. There you are. Right. Now, this bowline method, let me explain a bit more because I would like to elaborate on it just slightly. Now, in that same spot now across there, just on the edge of that current. Wonk. Oh, this, this wind's picking up though. Never mind. Right. Feather the line out and create a bow so it goes round in an arc. That's about it. About three or four rod, rod lengths of line. Rest it down. Now, the reason I'm pointing this rod up in, in, in such a height off the water level is that I'm trying to keep a lot of the line off the current. Now, <clears throat> this method is very similar to cod fishing, I suppose. They call it uptide, beach, uh, uptide boat casting. And what happens, they automatically hook themselves and they lift the weight so it releases the tension that, you, that you've got from the rod to the weight. And of course, that's why you get this drop back bite. Now, sometimes to help to bring on a, a, a bite, we let a couple of inches of line out every now and again, because by doing that, if you can imagine this bow and this link 
is actually dropping down. The bait is dropped an inch or two at a time. And sometimes that little bit of movement can attract a fish and we'll get a bite straight away. Let's do that again now. Just let it go a little bit. Just a couple of turns. It's a bite. Oh. There you are. It worked then. I missed that bite. I missed the fish, but it worked just by letting that little bit of line out. change up those maggots. Must have been a small fish that because <coughs> only the one maggot was touched. Mm, I'm going to try some worms shortly. I was told that worms are quite good as well on this river. As, it's, as I said before, it's the first time I've ever visited so why not experiment and practice. I'd like to try a lump of bread but unfortunately they haven't got the Type of bread that we use back home. Perhaps I'll go shopping and see if I can find some somewhere. All right, here we go. Again, same place. Bunk. You know, it's taking about three ounces this feeder here to hold that bottom. Surprising, him. Yes, another method of striking at every little twitch can produce fish when sometimes you, you can't determine whether it's a real bite or not. So a good idea is always, always strike at any little twitch. Right, I want to allow more ground bait now in the swim, so I think what I'll do, I'll change the feeder over for exactly the same feeder, but slightly modified. And I, su I suggest anyone to do the same. On the bottom you see a large hole cut away, okay? The reason being is the ground bait can come out a lot easier. So what we'll do, we'll swap this over now just to introduce a bit more ground bait into the swim. Right, put some more bait in now. There you go. Right, let's have a go at that. Some more bait in the swim. Overhead, right onto the current, blunk. Lodge. The feeder, they quite call it, uh, commonly call it the plastic pig. <laughs> I often wonder why they call it that name, you know. You know, we're actually fishing in somebody's back garden. Across the way here, there's three or four, five, six, seven, eight, well, a string of houses. Like bungalows. It's a fisherman's dream, that is. <laughs> to have a fishery like this in the bottom of their garden. In a moment, I'll probably try a straight bomb. Uh, and I'll put a bit more ground weight in physically with a catapult. They tell me that they bream up to six, seven, eight, even eight pound in here, so I'm going to try uh, some bunches of worm as well and see if that produces uh, a couple of fish. So many things to do, you don't know where to start. But I like to start off small, I like to start off small hooks, small baits, and then build up and see how they go. Oh. I think there's a bite down again. No, look, a bit of rubbish on the line, look. It's a nuisance. Look at that rubbish there. Somebody must be, oh, somebody must be cutting their garden, throwing all the leaves in the water. <laughs> Oh, ground meat. I'll make a sandwich here. I think I'll put a plug of ground meat in first. Some of the old red maggots that I know that they, they like. Red maggots are not so popular in our country for some particular reason. Don't know why. But certainly over here they prefer reds than any other colour. 
Do that, that's like a sandwich. Ground bait either end and a plug of maggots in the middle. Let's have a go on that. There we go. Lunk. Now I don't know if you actually heard that, but I was feathering the line. In other words, I was overcasting, and as soon as the feeder was going to the area that I wanted, I started putting pressure on the line so that it would slow it would slow it up in, in midair and as soon as it was over the area I wanted it to be I would stop it and it would boom, go in the same spot. A little bit of practice, quite easy to do. Oh, I've got a horse fly on my rod rest. Come on, get off. Right. No. Yeah. Oh, yes, says got him on, yeah. Had so much line to pick up then I didn't realise I had the fish on. I got him. He's coming. Mm, not so big this time, I think he's a bit smaller. Could could even possibly be a roach. Try that again, I'll try that uh, sandwich again. Ground bait. Maggots. Ground bait. Right. Listen to the reel. There you are. That's how you do it. Okay. Let the line out, form that loop again. One thing you must have is sharp hooks for this sort of method as well. That's why I quite often carry a, a little stone round with me, a sharpening stone. I also use it for my scissors as well. Sharpening scissors. They're always handy to have. I'll sharpen that hook in a minute because you never know. I have to drop it. Oh. Yeah, I'm in again. Ooh, lovely. Super. Ooh, I could build up a weight of fish. I got that feeling in my bones. There we go. Oh, look at the yak on that. <laughs> it's a big on this one. Ooh, I'll try and bring it through that current, and the best way to do it is just hold it there and let it swing round. So if I give pressure now, right in the middle of that current, it's going to come off. Come on, guide it gently, that's it. Right, now he's out that main current. Let's see if I can... Bit of pressure on him, bring him up. Dear. Lovely fish, beautiful. Come on, she comes. Oh, he's holding there well there. Come on. I never liked the Russian. Do you know fishing for bream in still water? You can hook them and they come in like wet sacks, but when you fish them on the river, God, what a difference. They don't have fight. I suppose it's, they use their wide bodies in the water. Yeah. So I give him slightly upstream and then bring him back down.
just get a bit, a bit of slime on the line. I always got a thing about that. I always like to take this. Yeah. Show them this effect of presentation. Elevate. Feather it out. Drunk. There you go. Landing it back. Have to drop it up. Yeah, I mean, again, once these good and green get into this flow, tremendous sport you get with them. Absolutely fantastic. Never known anything like it. Ooh, come on. Yeah, the wind's dropping down a bit as well now, so that's helping a bit. Come on. Gently does it. When the fish pulls, it's best to just let him go. Just don't keep reeling in. That's it, just do it gently. There you go. Just under the surface. Oops. Ah, now, what he's done there, he's turned over on the line. And he's just like a dead weight now. So, the best thing to do now is just to ease him in slowly. He can't fight because the line is just wrapped around his body. Uh, no, I need a landing net for this. No, it's unfortunate. It's, I've just broken the top of my landing net, so somehow I'll have to try and beach him. Come on. Yeah, he's just wrapped around his bottom fin, look. Ah, there you are. Come on. There you go. Ah, that's a common thing with bream, actually. And they flip over because their body's so wide, they, they tend to flip over on the line. There you are. That's interesting. You know, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the spots on his head. That means they're in spawning condition. That's a male. Oh, <coughs> oh well, I suppose that's, that's one that got away. Seems to have gone off a little bit now. The last 10 minutes. I think we'll try a try a change of tactics now. I think we'll go onto a, a straight bomb method. I've got a feeling that that feed has probably put them off a little bit with that ground bait going in. So if I loose feed it and put a straight bomb over it, possibly with a bigger hook and try a few uh, worms. Okay. Now let me show you how to set the bomb up, okay? After tying your bomb, 
onto the bottom of your line, either through a blood knot or some other knot that you normally use. I like to come up about six inches on the flowing river and a tail of approximately 20 inches. What we're going to do here now, I'm going to form a loop. And the easiest way I find, put my thumb on the line use the, and then use an index finger like so. So you curl it round, twist your, your wrist and pull through to form a loop. Okay, it's quite easy. Now this particular method of tying my tail on is very neat. You haven't got the loop and you haven't got any swivels. It's a straight line to line situation. And here I'm tying 1.7 to 3 pound main line. Okay, now if you notice that loop closed up, you see just by pulling it it'll close up. And now we'll just finish the knot off by doing a double twist turn. There you go. So there is my link. And when we're fishing the bow, we can still fish the bow with this method. And if you can imagine the line forming this, this bow, and every time I wind backwards, the bait will gradually fall downstream. As, and as I mentioned before, it does produce those few extra fish. Now we'll cut that off. Another bit of tail. There you go. And away we go. Now I think I'll try some worms. I've been told that they do tend to pick up the larger fish. Uh, some people have just come into my swim. I'm glad they're staying on this side. Hello? Yeah. Worms through the middle. And I'll tip it off with a, a maggot. Because worms do tend to wriggle off the hook, don't they? Okay, so we'll just tip it. Yeah, he's wriggling off. Now, push him back on. And then put the maggot, like so. Okay, a worm and maggot cocktail. Now, I'll just wait for these few boats to go past. Now, I'll cast it slightly downstream from the feeder line. Because if there are any fish still around, then they, they'll, they would have probably have dropped back from that line. Hello, nice day. Yes. Right, now they're gone. There we go. Slightly downstream, hold it there. Right, form that loop in the line again. Right, I've managed to borrow another landing net top now. So at least I'm ready. Put the lid back on the worms because they'll they'll get their, their little tail on the top and out they'll slide. Oh, there you are, right straight away. Good. Let me just check this worm. Hmm. I think I'll try some of my special ground bait. It's um, a liquid molasses ground bait, and there's herbs and aromatic flavours that I've picked up on the continent. See if that works. And a little bit of brown. Now, the first thing to do, just put that there a moment. First thing to do is to add water. Now normally you put the ground meat in and then you'd add water. But this time we're doing it the other way around. Water first. Oh, 
Right, inside we have some liquid molasses. So we empty the contents of, the, of this plastic sachet into the water. Okay. Put the plastic back in the box into your bag because you've got, got to observe the code even though we're in another country. Right, swish it round to bring out all those juices. Oops, so not thought about bring it in quick. I don't want them to tangle me up, do I? Oh, they're enjoying the sun. Hello. Hi. Do, do, do. Right. Put that down, I think. Right, back to this. Slush it round a bit there. Now, all the juices are in the water, so now we're going to add the ground bait. Okay, first of all, you, you create this. There you are. Nice, soft ground weight. A bit more. Oh, I can smell it wafting up now. The flavour. It's nice enough to eat. <laughs> you know, I'm sure sometimes ground baits there to catch the angler, not the fish. Now I've got the base, so I'm going to add just a bit of normal creme. You know, this is a super fine creme. Just put a bit of that on top of it. Lovely. Seal the bag up again. Right, that's it. Right, just the right consistency there. If that will do the job. Just had a few maggots and casters. A bit of chop worm. Wind's picking up a bit now. Just like to just let that line go a little bit. Yeah. Yes, this wind's picking up. I can hear it going through the line, the line of the rod. Hmm, I've seen a few. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I thought so. Mm, I was going to say, I seen some fish topping then. I was just going to say I was going to go on the float. But I'll stick to this. Yep. Well, at least I've established the fact that they prefer the maggots than the worm. That's it. Come on, steady. Steady now. That's it. Up through the current. It's just as you it's just as you it's just as I see the bank and the net, I think I'm sure. That's it. Ooh, look at that. Come on, come on. Come on, Johnny. Oop. Thank you. Lovely. That's the way to do it. Take your time and you'll, you'll always beat the bream. That's a nice one. It's quite noticeable, I'm just lip hooking these. Look at that. Oof. It's quite a heavy bomb I'm using there, incidentally. That's, I would say that's two ounces, yeah. Two ounces, just the whole bottom. It just shows you just shows you how bream can live in fast water. Yeah. Come on. 
because a lot, a lot of us are led to believe that bream actually live in slow water. But you can come to places like this and it th throws that theory right out the door. Well, they like my ground bait. <laughs> Change of ground bait works. Mind you, I remember doing that on the Y once. I was on target to, to do perhaps a hundred pound. And one of the lads come up, I'd run out of ground bait and I use his ground bait and it was a different flavour. Now, I don't know whether flavours work or not, but certainly that particular time, uh, as soon as I put the ball of his ground bait in, the fish just went off completely. And I ended up with 74 pounds and come second in, in the Y Championships. Perhaps if I hadn't, I, perhaps I would have won it, but anyway, that's just one of those things now. You learn by your mistakes. You know, you, a good angler should have a, a mind like a diary and should be able to flip back the pages and remember times in the past that certain conditions and methods have worked for him and when they haven't, and try and put them back into practice. Hmm. I make a note of all my competitions that I fish of the winner's weight, my weight, each side. So I can always look back in, uh, in future years and see the change in pattern of feeding, um, methods, techniques. For example, in 1972, uh, crystal dye, ooh, crystal dye maggots were, were the popular, most popular bait, but now of course it's banned from most waters because the carcinogenic qualities of the caddies. That was a bite, look at that. I don't know if you can see that. But that's a typical, that is a typical bream mangled maggot. A roach will give you like a suck maggot where it, it would, you know, if I can, you know, that, that's, you know, if I can squeeze all the juices out, that's what, that's what a roach bite would look. But a bream, it's like, oh, this is all the maggots just been killed, you know, without actually any physical evidence. Anyway, so much for that. Mr. Bite, that won't do, Clive. Come on, concentrate. My dear, it is only a pleasure stint after all. If it was a match, I would probably be kicking myself. <laughs> Because one fish can mean the difference between winning and coming second. Well, I'm enjoying this, but um, I'm quite tempted if this wind dies down to go onto the float. I like to put a loafer down that far side. It looks very tempting. I mean, oh, in again, lovely. The current over the, over the far side to the middle is quite strong. Hmm, it's coming quite easy, this one. Hmm. Ah, it's a perch. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, look at that. Lovely. It's a lovely looking fish. Oh, bloody thing. Oh. The spikes caught me. <laughs> Gotta be careful, they're right on the sides. <laughs> There you go. Lovely looking fish though, look. Look at that beautiful dorsal fin. You know, you can keep them in aquariums. Beautiful fish. As a matter of fact, back home, I have an aquarium in the house with quite a few different coarse fish. And what I do, I, I, I experiment them, 
petty men, and especially with bloodwomen jokers and various bits of ground bait, just to see their response. It's quite surprising what you can learn in an aquarium and how fish feed and how ter territorial some of them are and perch noticeably. They should go around in pairs. I wonder if I can catch his partner. He's a little bit too far over there in that bit of ground bait. That's it, perfect. Just catching that edge of that water. From that slack to the fast water. Yes. Then again, on a straight lead. Oh, bloody, he's kiting me. Now, now, what he's done there, you see, he's gone out into, into the current and he's using his body mass against me. So it's really tough. To, that's it. He's coming. Swung right round now. I think he's probably. Facing upstream towards me, that's it. So I'll just start reeling them in now. That's it, come on. Ah, there's a snag there, you know. Ah, yes. Ooh, ooh, he's fighting again now. It was a lively one. This is fantastic, man, I must admit. Wish we had water like this back home. Ooh, ooh. Come on. He's using the current, this one is. Oh. <laughs> You've got to go with them, see, you can't, you can't afford to keep yanking them. I said he comes. Oh, yeah, yes. That's it. Ooh. Look at him there. Look at him using his body mass there. You can, look at it. Look at that. See? 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 They go side to side. Look, look. Oh, no, 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 that's typical. Ah, I think I've got him now. He's, I, think he, I think he's resigned. That's it. He's up. Lovely. Ah. Oh, a nice one. Oh, what's it? About five pounds, that one. Four and a half, five, kind of. I can't even get my hands on it, so big. <laughs> oh, bloody me. All right, come on. Oh, look at that. Whew. Whew. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, a bit snotty, mine. <laughs> Oh, well, there you are, see. Just surprising. Get a bit of slime off the line. I always like to hold the rod like that, incidentally, right by there. So simple. It's one of the techniques I use for holding the, the pole. All right, there. Right, now I had that one a little bit further downstream, so I'll try it again. Just bring it forward a little bit to the current. And just give it line. Down you go. Right. Oh, 
yes, soon again. Hmm, that one took a bit longer to come. It's throwing off a little bit. Come on then. Just let him kite round in the flow. And once he's on my side, I'll bring him slowly up. See it? Oh, he's coming nice. No, that's unusual. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but I've actually got slime on the line. Just below. Look at that. Just below my tip. I'm just reeling it to the top of the tip. I see more breathing than I realise. Ooh, here he comes. Oh, blimey. Once they reach that surface, they seem, they always seem to, to weigh down a little bit heavier. There you are. Here he comes. He's shaking his head. Oh, yeah. These are much too big to bully. You just gotta take your time with them. Yeah, he goes. There you go. Lovely. God, blimey. Like, like peas in a pod. What's this one? This has gotta be four pounds as well. Three maggots then. <laughs> right now I got that one slightly upstream. So let's have a look. Got a foot from the rushes. Bit of belly. That's it, right? Look like a knock straight away then. Hmm. I'm too happy with that one then. Now I've seen a couple of fish topping further downstream. I'm definitely going to have a go and low for it. It's one of my favourite methods. The float. Mind you, they're all my favourites, really. <laughs> as long as they catch fish. Just go a little bit downstream. Gotta keep working at it, see? Bit of ground bait now. Bloom. Just on the current. A discarded line now, put in my bag. I just, I just 
felt as if I've snagged on something. Let me just check that point of that hook. Oh yeah, slightly blunt there. Well, there's no need really to alter the complete hook because it's just blunted on the end. So I'll just sharpen it up. And I find the easiest way to, to put an edge to it is by holding the shank together with your fingers, like so. And then one, two, three, four, oh, five, five scrapes. Gives you a nice sharp point again. And you're up. It's a lot quicker than changing the hook and cheaper. Right, a bunch of three maggots this time. And downstream a bit. There. You can't quite get uh, the same amount of bow in the line downstream, but you can still do it to a certain extent, so give it a go. It's normally fish straight across in front of you, the bow method, but you can get away with it to a certain extent, fishing downstream. And again, ah, this is something different. Ah. Oh, it's coming very easy. It's certainly not a bream. I wouldn't have thought so. Oh, oh it's a roach. Ah. Well, 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 well. Look at that. A <laughs> bunch of three maggots, a little thing like that. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's been a super day and I thoroughly enjoyed myself catching on these various methods. Super. I think now what I'll do, I'll just take the note and have a quick weigh up. I guess I've got about 50 pounds, so let's see. I've never been very good at guessing weights, but <laughs> let's have a look. Oh. Dude, dude, look at that. Oh. I think I've, I think I've underestimated it. Oh. <laughs> Forty-eight pound. Brilliant. And where's that? Where's that biggest one? I've got to take a photo of that for my album. Where's he gone? Oh.
beautiful. Let's put them back quickly. Not to cause too much stress. Okay. Oh, they're beautiful. Come on then. Let's go. Come on. That'd be cool. Well, that was a decent bag of fish. I hope that you've picked up some useful hints today and can put them into practice very soon. If I told you that I can set up a complete loafer in what? 10 seconds? If you don't believe me, here's your opportunity. Right, start counting. One, two, <laughs> I can't, that's bloody like him off, hang on. Put a discarded line now, put it in my bag. Even, even though we're in a foreign country, we, we should still observe the highway code. <laughs> uh, but, see what happens, Mick, is that if you... Yeah, uh, he's come off now. What he's done, he's gone into a snag. As soon as he felt himself hooked, They realise it's hooked, or they, they can feel a, a sharp prick with the... Well, I didn't mean that. <clears throat> when they feel it, they... Sh <laughs> <laughs> you know all the tricks, don't you, camera people? <laughs> what are they doing, Mick? Catch some candy shots. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's that? Biggles. <laughs> Biggles. <laughs> N. E N D. N. <laughs> <laughs>